Hi everyone, this is Jenny Hebert-Byrne. I'm an Associate Professor in Community Health Sciences, and I'm going to provide you with a brief overview of community-based participatory research. So a common definition people use for CBPR, or community-based participatory research, is that it's a collaborative approach to research that equitably involves all partners in the research process, recognizing the unique strength that both bring. So both the academic partner and the community or the practice partner. So it br begins with a research topic that's important to the community. So this grounds the research in community priorities, and it has the aim of combining knowledge with action and achieving social change. So when we think about CBPR, we think about research that <clears throat> excuse me, involves collaborative, equitable partnership across all the research phases. So this starts from, as I just said, the identification of what even is the research topic or the research focus, or the research question, <clears throat> but involves community or practice partners through each stage of the research. So that's the identification of the research design, the research instruments, the data collection, the data analysis, the dissemination of findings into action. So CBPR also recognizes the community as the unit of identity, which makes it a particularly useful approach for people like me who do community level research or neighborhood level research. As I said, it recognizes the strengths that academia brings to the partnership and communities bring to the partnership. And it, it involves co-learning or capacity building. So the idea that through the process of engaging in partnership, co-learning occurs and capacity building occurs, again, both of the community and of the academy. So in this case, it's the academy uh, learning how to do more collaborative research better because we typically learn how to do research uh, without partners, really driven by the academic um, as the um, person with the knowledge and the expertise to drive research. So there's a lot of different kinds of participatory research. Um, sometimes you'll hear about action research, which I'll distinguish from CBPR um, in a few slides. Um, people engage in participatory action research, PAR research, or youth participatory action research, or YPAR. Um, you can also um, hear language around action, science, or inquiry, so uh, action research and inquiry. And all of these kinds of research all intersect around these three interconnecting goals of research, action, and education. Uh, CBPR, we distinguish CBPR from these other kinds of research in um, that it's not just placed in a community, community-based, but it's community-driven and directed. And so we'll talk a little bit about some distinguishing features, but CBPR um, is about community-driven research or community-directed research that's not just placed within a neighborhood or a population group, but is actually co-led. So the history of CBPR, it emerges from two different traditions. Uh, one is the Northern tradition, uh, kind of having a global perspective. This emerged around the 1940s. And this kind of collaborative research really is focused, is very pragmatic. It's focused on problem solving. It uses consensus models, um, coming up to consensus with broad groups of stakeholders. And it also involves a lot of um, focus on leadership, the transforming of leaders to engage in partnership. Um, so leaders within practice or community settings and also leaders within academic settings. The other kind of CBPR emerged um, is referred to as the Southern tradition and emerged around the 1970s. And this kind of research um, draws from Paulo Frarian's work in liberation education. And this involves what people refer to as emancipatory research or uh, liberation kinds of research, where it really challenges the colonizing practices of research generally and of political power. Um, so this pulls from Frary's ideas of both um, banking education versus popular education and his idea of praxis. So I'm going to just define both of those at this point. So Paulo Freire suggested that uh, he draws a lot of his inspiration from education, adult education, and suggests that this model, the common model of educating, involves banking education where the teacher has all the knowledge 
and deposits knowledge into students. And in that way, um, banks the knowledge until uh, the teacher needs to make a withdrawal of the knowledge. And usually that withdrawal is done um, in some kind of test where the student demonstrates the degree to which they can produce knowledge that looks very much like the teacher. And this kind of banking, he says, uh, doesn't move anything, doesn't um, involve any kind of action or change. And so he proposes that popular education where we draw from people who are experiencing a phenomenon of interest and leverage and privilege basically uh, their expertise in their own experience um, and use their expertise and their experience in the education model is a kind of education that leads to change. So this kind of philosophy of, of um, recognizing the expertise of people's experience along with the expertise of the teacher, or in this case, the researcher, um, is Frarian's idea that this is how you make social change. And he refers a lot to the importance of um, the oppressed people who are experiencing a particular phenomena that's leading to social or health inequalities um, being the agents of change um, and that one must recognize the experiences of the oppressed are tied to the experiences of the oppressor which are usually mainstream society that has power um, at the time. So Ferrian's idea of popular education and his idea of praxis, which is this idea of um, action, reflection, and action, kind of learning by doing, uh, uh, defines this Southern tradition. So both traditions follow these four pillars of CBPR, um, delivering high quality research, the idea that with participation, research is better. Uh, the co-construction of knowledge, um, mobilizing impact-oriented evidence so that our, the, the uh, evidence that is collected is designed to have an impact, that we don't collect data um, or evidence for research um, unless there's an opportunity to make some kind of impact or change, and that the research process should result in long-lasting partnerships. So this Southern tradition that uh, Paulo Freire really inspired, um, speaks to the fact that action should not be for populations, but with, and that the oppressed and the oppressors uh, play roles that socially construct each other's realities. And so while the oppressed must be engaged for fight for their liberation, so uh, we, we don't want to engage in social change on behalf of others, we want to engage with, um, the oppressed have to be engaged as well. And um, in this case, issues of power are really important because the oppressed, I'm sorry, the oppressors must be willing to give up power uh, for social change to happen. So it emphasizes the social change agents of um, the oppressed who should lead, but the oppressors who should also be involved in the process. And that's the Southern tradition. So these kinds of research uh, can be laid out on a continuum of engagement with kind of this shared leadership, this shared learning, uh, this action-oriented research being on the far right of the continuum of shared leadership, but that engagement can happen across this continuum. And so when we talk about community-engaged research, you can see research where uh, there's an engagement component where you're outreaching, reaching out to a particular population to get feedback. There's a kind of research in which you might have a community advisory board that oversees or approves the kind of research. There's a kind of research that involves research participants as co-investigators. Um, so, and this is moving towards this model of more partnership, collaboration, um, co-leadership. Uh, and as we move on the continuum to the, to the right, um, we think about community-based participatory research being on this far right, kind of aspiring for these goals of shared leadership. So when we think then of traditional research where we study participants a, uh, from the outside, um, we can think about kind of these levels of engagement in, uh, moving from the research participant as a subject or a study position to a research participant as a partner. And the idea is that as we move towards this model where research participants can be research partners, our research improves because we are 
um, best position to understand the phenomena because the people who experience the phenomena are at the table um, of the research study. Um, but it also, we're able then to leverage the findings from our study and our partnerships to promote social change. And I'll show a model of CBPR in a second where we can talk a little bit more about that. So in CBPR then there's the negotiation of information and capacities in both directions. So researchers are able to transform tools for community members to analyze and decide on the action. And the community members can transfer their expertise um, the, the, of the content or the experience and the meaning of this to the researchers and produce pursuit of this co-learning, this co-construction of knowledge, and then the application to change. So why is CBPR needed? Uh, what people argue is that our traditional model of research in which we do research separate from people who experience the phenomena um, is, uh, it, it is limited in the fact that it can be this positivist deductive way of thinking where we test hypotheses that typically emerge from outside the experience that we're interested in. So the role of the research in this traditional kind of, of research is meant to be outside of the research phenomena um, and in that way being kind of unbiased and it, it uses this laboratory setting or this helicopter way of doing research where we helicopter around the phenomena, we take the data, we analyze it outside of the context and we make recommendations acontextually or without people at the table who best know the phenomena to understand it. And so the idea is that this model, this kind of top-down um, way of doing research is not positioned in a way to get the greatest insight on the phenomena, nor is it positioned for us to make the most change with respect to the phenomena. So that participatory research, research that is done in partnership with people who experience the phenomena will be able to identify those those portals or those intervention points within the phenomena where we can make the most change. And it's also positioned to have a better understanding of the phenomena, have a deeper, richer understanding because your research partners are people who know the phenomena really well. So CBPR is kind of the opposite of this kind of helicopter way. It is really good at generating hypotheses because of this kind of emic or insider understanding rather than an edict or outside understanding. We can get critical insights um, from people most affected. Um, and because the research focus and the approach is mutually agreed upon at every stage of the analysis, we think this leads to um, higher quality, better research, research that's better positioned. Uh, in CBPR, instead of trying to avoid context, kind of being outside of context, uh, it emphasizes that context matters, that context is central to our research. And both because of this and because um, CBPR is really good at generating hypotheses for future research, uh, qualitative methods are really central to CBPR, very useful to CBPR, and that's why people who do CBPR also tend to be qualitative researchers or have a strong interest in quality of research. So uh, in 1998, Barbara Israel and her colleagues kind of came up with nine principles of CBPR that have really tested, um, have really are really central still to a lot of the ways in which we do CBPR. So um, Barbara Israel and her colleagues talked about community as the unit of identity, building on the strengths and resources of both the academy and the community, emphasizing collaborative equitable partnerships across all phases of the research, even those research stages that are really hard to be collaborative like data analysis. Um, CBPR promotes co-learning and capacity building, it integrates and achieves balance between research and action for the mutual benefits of all partners. Uh, it emphasizes local relevance of public health problems, ecological perspectives that recognize and attend to the multiple determinants. Um, CBPR involves systems development through a cyclical and iterative process. And CBPR disseminates findings and knowledge gained to all partners. Um, so dissemination is a key piece um, and knowledge translation is a key piece to CBPR because those findings should be disseminated in ways that make change. And that can be change in the community and that can be change in the academy. 
Um, and CBPR involves a long-term process and commitment. So one of the important things is um, that CBPR, because qualitative methods are often used in CBPR, people think about CBPR as uh, a research method or as a compilation of research methods. methods. But in fact, it's an orientation or a, to research or a fundamentally different approach to research. Um, and so Cornwall and colleagues talked about the methodological context of the application of the methods is what's important in CBPR, not the methods themselves. It's the attitudes of the researchers, uh, both the academic researcher and the community researcher, which in turn determine how, by, and for whom research is conceptualized and conducted. And this, um, this is corresponding to the location of power then at every stage of the research process. And so this idea of balancing power um, throughout CBPR, th throughout long-term academic community partnerships in CBPR uh, is really fundamental to how we understand CBPR and also very hard to do. Um, so Flex and his colleagues uh, suggested if we do our research well in CBPR, reality should appear actually more unstable, complex, and disorderly than we do than it does now. Um, and so this kind of thinking where our research is positioned to show the complexities um, it, uh, is actually kind of common thinking in, in CBPR, which pushes back on this deductive positivist view of science. It really challenges whose knowledge matters, um, the knowledge of the academic um, investigator or the community member who experiences um, the issue. It challenges the role of the researcher as a leader. And as I said before, challenges these power relationships um, and the idea that a more equitable relationship between the researcher and the researched uh, will lead to better research, better findings, uh, better opportunity for social change. So this is a the uh, latest conceptual model for CBPR. And I want to just briefly walk through this model. This is from Wallerstein and her colleagues. The latest version of this um, uh, was updated in 2016. And the idea is that uh, it hypothesizes that um, CBPR has these kind of four overarching domains. So uh, context on the far left, uh, partnership processes, intervention and research, and outcomes. And it basically hypothesized that this context of any given community academic partnership grounds the partnership processes, which, in, which include characteristics, uh, relationships, partnership structures, and that this in turn affects or changes the intervention or the research. So the research design or the health intervention that occurs and that the implementation of the research methods and interventions then affect, can affect long-term uh, systems and capacity outcomes. And that these outcomes should happen on multiple levels and that these circle back. So you see at the bottom, the arrows circling back, this uh, points to the systems change that should happen. Um, and again, the, ideally the social change that can happen in, in our context, but also the systems change um, in the institutions in which the research is happening, so academic setting, and then the communities in which we do research. So this complex way of thinking about CBPR um, it's also really important to think about you know, what are the outcomes of our research. So we tend to think in traditional uh, kinds of research, more positivist kinds of research in which the researcher is outside of the phenomena, that the outcome are the results of the findings. And those findings are published in a manuscript and those that manuscript um, has certain kind of indirect and direct outcomes that come from that, which include the uh, researcher getting credit for the research findings and maybe promoted because of that. And CBPR challenges um, this idea of what are the outcomes and that there should be these systems level outcomes that we should be able to see change in communities and change in institutions because of this. And right now, uh, academic institutions aren't really counting those other kinds of changes in how we measure excellence of research or the basis for the promotion of researchers or the recognition of change in communities. So it's kind of this fundamentally different way of thinking about research um, that 
that we would like to see results in kind of changes in institutional um, thinking around uh, what is excellence in community research. So it is a bit of a recap. There's some core concepts to CBPR. Uh, CBPR, whether it's action research, why PAR, um, PAR, it's a collaborative uh, kinds of research engaging community members. And these can be community members in neighborhoods or these can be practice partners at local health departments um, and researchers in a joint process in which uh, all contribute equally. It's co-learning. It involves systems development, uh, capacity building in the academy and in the community. And it's an empowering process in which participants increase control over their lives and it achieves balance between research and action. So here's some references from which um, I drew some of these uh, slides from. Um, and I'm pulling these slides together as part of some modules for the Collaboratory for Health Justice. Uh, and any questions, concerns, or ideas, uh, we welcome dialogue on these topics. So thank you very much for your time.